Good evening, YouTube. Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. Hopefully you all had a fantastic weekend. We've got the Duramax rocking back here on the channel. Today we're doing some upgrades in the lighting and especially with the mirrors. Working with a couple of companies such as JDM ASAR and Boost Auto Parts. Boost Auto Parts, we've got some switchbacks going on for the truck today. Going to be a whole new deal for the front end of the truck. So. We're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process on how to and what kind of changes are gonna be made with adding these kits. Stay tuned. So for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know some of the upgrades that I've done to the truck, one of those major things that I did over the last year was to upgrade the mirrors. Now there's all kinds of different options you can go for when upgrading mirrors to the newer style uh, tow mirrors for the Chevy trucks, uh, one of which is Boost Auto Parts, but at the time didn't really have the cash for that one, so I ended up uh, going with a cheaper Chinese brand off of Amazon. I'll put the link to that video down in the description below where you can check out the install video. But today I really wanted to do a little bit of upgrades to those mirrors. Boost Auto Parts is one of those companies that is willing to deal with you. Maybe if you didn't make the decision to buy their specific mirrors, they're still going to hook you up and they've got all kinds of options for doing upgrades to those newer body style Chevy tow mirrors. They do Fords and Dodges as well, but we're dealing with the Chevy today. So we're gonna be switching over the front lighting to a bunch of switchbacks. And if you don't know what switchbacks are, switchbacks are where the front lighting is going to be one color when just in a running light position. And then when you turn on the turn signal, it's going to flash another color. So we're gonna be white and we're gonna be flashing over to yellow when we go to use turn signals. So a really cool, neat upgrade that's not really all that pricey for the Duramax. So let's go over some of the tools and the kits that I got to be able to do this job today. From Boost Auto Parts, we ended up getting the tow mirror light switch back, and we got it in the dotted strip style, where it's gonna be white on the front, and then when you go to turn, it's gonna turn amber, and it's gonna be the smoke style lenses that are gonna match just like the headlights and everything that we have already on the truck. So we got those, we picked up some wiring adapter kits, which are gonna allow you to add power to the park lamp style lights on it, some of the adapter harnesses that come with it. And then to match those, we also got the JDMA star switchbacks for our front turn signals too, to make everything all copacetic and matching. Uh, one of the things that I didn't notice at first is the lower mirrors on my Chinese mirrors, which we will go through at a later time, uh, had a different style bottom mirror. So you kind of have to break the lower mirrors to be able to do that kind of a job. Now, Boost Auto Parts has come up with a solution for that uh, issue when you use cheaper mirrors. Uh, they have a lower mirror adapter kit which comes with new mounting plates. And then we also got the new style glass to go for those mounting plates as well. It's gonna be a pretty easy install. Yes, we're gonna have to pull the doors off to be able to get the mirrors totally off of the unit, but if you have these tools, you should be able to do it. We've got some wire strippers and crimpers, some T15, T20 sockets, a 10 millimeter socket, some trim uh, tool here for pulling off small panels, a regular Phillips screwdriver, and a torch for heat shrinking some of the wiring that we're going to be adjusting. Like I said, it's gonna be a pretty easy process, but let's get cracking into it. First things first, we're gonna to have to get our door panel off the truck here. To be able to do that, we're gonna be taking this little clip off and then there's gonna be a Torx bit behind that one. Here on the front, there's just gonna be a little trim clip that pops right off. There's a seven millimeter hidden in here at the handle. There's a seven millimeter hidden in here behind the lock position handle. And then we're also gonna to have to pop off this interior bezel behind the door handle. So let's pop all that off and then the door skin will actually lift up and come off the door. I forgot to mention that before taking that door panel off, 
There's also the little sail panel here on the top portion. And then once you get it pulled back enough, there's gonna be your electrical connectors that go into the switch assembly. There's four of them in total, at least on my truck. Now what we're gonna do is there's a little foam insert here in the door, and there's gonna be 10 millimeters, three of them to be specific, holding the actual mirror assembly on. On the last install, we actually put a set of wires here that went to our reverse light, so we're gonna unplug that one, right like so, and then when we get to pulling this through, all of our wires will go through the mirror. Easy as that, our mirror assembly is removed. Now first things first, we're gonna need to get our mirror glass off of here. The lower one, you're gonna wanna tilt it as far up as we can so we can reach our hands in here and get as close to the middle center section as we can to be able to pry from there. We're gonna hear an audible pop. And the mirror glass just pops right out. There should be three connectors here on the back side. Two are gonna be for your heater grid. Maybe here. And then one is gonna be for the turn signal right there. So if you guys end up breaking this one on accident, which it happens for older mirrors, Boost Auto Parts also does sell these as well. Now I guess when you get to ordering, this is the part that you probably should check out beforehand because if you have the cheaper style Chinese mirrors like these, then this lower mirror will not come off. All you have to do is you kind of have to look into this area, tilt it up as much as you can to be able to see into there. If you see a mirror that is kind of like this that has these clips along that side, then the mirror is removable it should be fine and it's the same steps reach in underneath right around the center section pull up and you should hear it pop to be able to pop out of there but if it's like mine getting unlucky these mirrors are actually the inner portion is assembled and then the glass is put into it so there is literally a screw right there in the middle so we have to break the glass to be able to get this one out. That's why we ended up going with the upgraded mirrors and adapters from Boost Auto Parts. So let's get to breaking some glass. There we are. Like I said, located down inside of the very middle of that glass was a screw, Phillips head screw. It screwed right into this little opening right here. This did not come off. So now we got a broken old piece of glass. How much fun. What we're gonna get to now is we actually have to take off this ring that has the inner portion of the mirror assembly on it. To be able to do that, there's going to be one, two, three, four, and sometimes like in mine, a fifth Phillips head screw right there. So let's remove those. Now this center section will just kind of lift up off of here and then all we have is the one connector for the reverse lamp output on this specific mirror it's going to be right here disconnect it right there like that next we're going to want to extend our tow mirror pretty much all the way out and get this nice fancy glass out of the way so i don't break it and let's go ahead and extend this out There we go, we're extended all the way. Now what we're gonna need to do is this piece right here, this plastic housing, it actually separates the upper half of it. So what you're gonna need is a small flathead or a some kind of a pick. There are two little pry points in this area. You kind of pry out on it there, as well as on the bottom side. 
course you pop one out and the other one doesn't want to stay there. Now that it's popped out, we're going to kind of, again, make sure this is all the way extended because sometimes it wants to fall back in and we're going to slide it out that direction. Might take a little bit of force because all kinds of road debris and everything are in there. So put a little effort into it and it'll come out. Just like so. The final thing that we really need to get out from this assembly is still our switch back. That is going to be held on between a couple of layers here. The first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove the electrical connector, which is located right here. Simple as that. Tuck it off to the side. And then there's two Phillips head screws located there and there. We're going to remove those. And now this switchback is actually located between this inner housing right here and these clamshells. So you're going to have to do a little bit of finagling again, and you may also find it easier to actually take these clamshells off, which the only thing at this point that are holding them on are a couple of little pry clips along the edges, the corners. It should be four of them on each one of these mirrors. It makes it a little bit easier with your caps removed to be able to finagle around this inner portion of the mirror. At this time also, if you guys wanted to, you could also paint your caps, as you can see I have done prior to this. But then once you're able to pry that outer section back, the actual switch back assembly, the front light comes right out and this is the main section that we're going to be changing. This is going to be our new switch back light assembly that's going to fit back into the same spot in the kit comes with both sides and they are marked on the back of the assembly i don't know if you guys can see right here but this one is marked for the left side the r would be for the right side noticeably you can see the difference there is the electrical connector difference and that is where all of our wiring and adapters are going to come into play this piece specifically is going to be plugging directly into our switch back light once we get it placed in, into the assembly. So let's go ahead and get this put in. There we are, got it all into place. Everything is lined up here on the front side. I like to leave that plastic covering on until we get it slid into place. Now at this point is when we can kind of remove it before we tighten it down. Take that one off right there. And now we're just gonna reverse and put the two screws the retainers back into those same spots to hold it down. Just like so. To start on the wiring process, you're going to want to get the nice orange wire that is all cabled and coiled up for you. And we're going to want to separate from the short end from the fuse area. So we're going to unclip that one section and later on we'll put that fuse area inside of the door itself. So with the shorter side, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start out at this end and we're going to have to route it up through this section of the mirror. And now that we have all these open areas and open wires, we're gonna route it along in the channel through to the inside part of the mirror where we can have this wire hang out right here. After you get that routed, feel free if you want to, to zip tie the existing wires to that one into place so they're not flopping all around, especially when you go to put this cover back on.
All you'll need at this point is roughly four or five inches of wire inside the actual mirror assembly. Don't want to give yourself too much, too much slack in there because you still do need a good amount of wire hanging out on the inside of the mirror. We've got our adapter plug here that is going to go into the little four pin connector on the back of the switchback. We're going to clip that in and then we're going to strip back the pre-stripped section of the orange wire and we're going to crimp and heat shrink the orange wire together on the orange one hanging out of this section. We'll get that put in. I also like to put a little bit of dielectric grease in here. Yes, they are very nice and high quality and they do have weatherproof seals, but just out of habit, I like to put a little bit of it in there. Might be a good thing to do. Torch 300 from Snap-on comes in handy, or a lighter, something to heat shrink this. I do really appreciate it, Booth's Auto Parts, that you put quality butt connectors with heat shrink and quality, you know, all weather seals on these. That makes a huge difference for these. I, I definitely love that you did that. Now we're gonna pull back some of our slack because we don't wanna have too much wires hanging out in this big old bundle inside of the mirror. The wire that had the connector here that at one point went to the mirror assembly for the turn signal is going to plug into the adapter right here that goes to your switchback. So that is going to be inside that section and we're going to kind of coil this up and tuck it down into these big openings right there. Now we are going to grab our assembly that is going to be for the mirror adapters and all and we're going to start plugging the adapters into this one. The other thing that you're going to want to grab is going to be your other adapter plug. I think it was the part number 2848YH adapter and this is going to be the adapter that goes between the light here or I'm sorry the turn signal and what would have been the other turn signal wire to plug into the mirror. I'm going to plug our backup light in back to the same section that we had right in here. Also, I had already put a little bit of dielectric grease into this connector as well, because this one from before was not a weatherproof seal. We'll put that one in there. And then our adapter plug will plug this black section right here, a little bit of dielectric grease, plugging that one together and making sure that is in the open area of the mirror along with your two heater grid wires. Careful not to have any of these wires in a section where you have to put this little middle screw in. And we're gonna replace this down into the assembly. Make sure our wires are not getting pinched in any way, setting it back down into place. So now we've got our connector for the turn signal on the mirror assembly adapted right there and then the two grid heater wires also hanging out on top of that. Let's go ahead and put all of our screws back in and then we'll get to plugging that in and putting our lower mirror on. To install the new lower mirror adapter it's a four piece little conglomerate right here. As you can see it's got two little cutout openings and that's going to be congruent with the upper clips that are in the existing housing. That first section will slide right in there. And then there's going to be the cup assembly that will just drop into the middle. Now we've got our little star bit and the screw retainer that is going to push down on all of it. This is going to be a standard Phillips head right here. And the tighter that you tighten this screw down will be the tighter that this is to move. As you can see, we have our 360 degrees of movement on that one. So the tighter you make this, the tighter the mirror will actually be. So you may, you know, want to kind of fiddle with that to see how hard it is to put on. I like that tension right there just enough and I can still move this back and forth with a good slight bit of movement to it there. Looking good. Then the lower mirror assembly is going to clip right down into place. Kind of like you did before, 
kind of place it down in the center, make sure everything's lined up, and then placing the palm of your hand in the middle of it, giving us a firm little push, and you hear it clip down into everything. We've got the motion that we need and a fresh new mirror. Now to put on the upper glass again, we're going to connect our heater grids. It does not matter which one went where because heater grids in and out doesn't really matter. Plug those both on. Just like so. And then with a little bit of our dielectric grease, also to put into this connector also, being that it is not weatherproof. Just like so. And then just like you did on the lower section, this upper one, we're gonna make sure all of our little connections or our little close points are lined up and then placing your palm in the middle, a little push, clips right into place like that. So now the only thing left that we have to do is put on our upper shroud here. I'm gonna end up zip tying these wires together because I don't want them flopping around and getting them caught in the wrong areas. We'll be ready to put our mirror back on. Be sure when you're feeding your wires back through, we're not going to be pinching any of them into any bad areas that we don't wanna to have to mess with wiring issues later on down the road. Pull them through at the same time you're placing your mirror in. We're now going to grab our orange wire assembly that we had unhooked before and we are going to plug it in right here. Now the fun part that you're going to have is this wire has to go inside of the vehicle. So we're going to have to route this one down into the door through the little accordion between the door and into the inside of the vehicle makes it really easy if you have a pass-through tool, kind of like I made out of a snap-on handle a couple of weeks back. I'll put the link to this one down in the description too. Pass it through. And we can go ahead and pull our pass through off. Now we're gonna run this one inside of the vehicle and we're gonna show you where to hook it up once you get an extra wire to run underneath the hood that also comes with an adapter for the kit. So the very last thing we're gonna to have to do for hooking it all up is getting a wire ran in through the firewall and then going to both of our orange wires from the mirrors. Now what we're gonna to wanna to hook this up to is going to be the trailer park wire right here. The kit comes with an adifuse. So we went ahead and we put the adifuse in. Make sure that you make a notch big enough here in the side of your box to be able to get the wires through without pinching them later on down the road. Run it through in through one of the weather seals of the firewall and then splice it into the two wires underneath the dash that the passenger side one you'll have to cross over. They give you plenty of wire there in that on that orange wire to get it all the way across to where you need to tie in underneath the driver's side seat area. All right, so now before we get to doing the other side, let's give you guys an idea of what the difference is in the switchback styles of the mirrors. If we turn on our parking lights, you can see that the right side has our nice white light and the left side doesn't have anything because it didn't have anything hooked up before. But if we turn the key on and let's give you guys an idea of what we're working with on the turn signals, we had the left turn signal and now our right switch back have a look at that one guys that's a really neat difference between the two and then if we have our hazards on so we can see both at the same time there's our differences in the switchback styles i really like having that standard white running light and before we do to the uh, actual turn signals and park lights in the front everything will match up once we get these jdma star bulbs in there 
So we're gonna get to putting the other side together and then let's go ahead and put these JDM ASAR switched back bulbs in the front and see what that one looks like. Now before we show you guys the final product, we've got the last thing to install today is our switchback bulbs from JDM ASAR. We picked these up and we've already had these headlights out like a million times before, so we're gonna pull them out and I'm gonna do these off camera and we'll show you the final project. Well, it really was a simple build. It was something that pretty much anybody can do with a simple set of tools. And we got it all done. We got the JDM A-Star bulbs put into the front, which are the switchback styles. I actually picked up a little bit of something extra from JDM A-Star. I picked up some of their interior lights. So when, we'll see, when I open my door and stuff here, I got all these nice, fancy, really bright lights on the interior too. So I upgraded those with the JDM A-Star 194 bulbs. Really nice, easy things to do. Complements all the lighting in the truck very well. So we've got the project done and it's just about the right time of day or night that is to be able to get some really sick shots of all of the switchbacks with the Boost Auto Parts mirrors and the JDM A-Star bulbs. So let's check that one out. appreciate everybody tuning into the channel. Hopefully you were able to learn something with this build. It's something that's super easy and you guys can enjoy this kind of stuff as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel. We've got some really neat stuff coming up for the Duramax. We're going to be going up to HSP Diesel up in Michigan this next weekend with none other than the Truckmaster. And eh, we're going to let Captain Ron tag along too, but it's going to be a good time for that one. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and stay tuned into the channel for that cool content. Thank you again. I appreciate it. And as always, you guys stay awesome.